Every year, the Royal Sussex County Hospital in Brighton discharges around 50,000 patients from its wards. Conventionally, the support a patient needs at home is assessed before they leave hospital. This is known as assess to discharge. Are you from the Red Rose County? Traditionally, a patient will come into hospital and they'll be seen by the medical team with their medical problem and then there'll be a conveyor belt of assessments. So once they're medically ready to go home, they'll need to be assessed by the physiotherapist and then the occupational therapist and then the social worker. And this whole process takes time. Time that can slow down a patient's recovery. They sit around and don't do very much whilst waiting for other people to assess them to see what they might need to go home and you know, basically getting weaker. This new approach turns that on its head. In late 2014, the Hospital Trust introduced a process called Discharge to Assess. Now, hospital staff, community teams and the voluntary sector are working together to support people just home from hospital in a different way. Once a patient is medically ready for discharge, those assessments of function by our therapists and social workers are done in the patient's own home. People get better quicker at home. They like being at home usually. You can see how they live and what works best for them in that environment. And as long as we provide the support to that environment, the outcomes are extremely good for patients. <laughs> This film shows how Discharge to Assess works by following one patient's journey home from the Chichester ward. On the 11th of April, 77-year-old Diane was rushed to hospital after a serious fall at home, caused by dizziness from a bladder infection. I'm Dr Hutchinson. I've been looking after you since you came into hospital, really, on that Saturday, because I was working that weekend. Yes. After seven days of medical treatment, Diane was, was ready for home. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to go to our team meeting and we'll discuss about your care with the team and make sure that we have the right plans in place uh, to hopefully get you home today with support. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Morning. 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 Every day, Tom gathers together a multidisciplinary team to discuss the needs of every patient on the Chichester Ward. I'm Anna, the SHA. Key healthcare staff from the hospital and local NHS Community Trust attend, as well as a social worker from the City Council and representatives from local charities that support older and disabled people in the community. If we move through to um, the lady in bed 15, um, her home circumstances are a little bit difficult, um, but she does have a supportive neighbour upstairs. She is a lady who, who we think as a team would benefit from the Discharge to Assess programme. So as a team, we just need to make the final plans for that. Um, jo, do you want to input into that? She's going to need help with probably washing and dressing, um, preparation of meals. She's probably not going to be able to go out shopping like she used to, so she's going to need um, somebody to help her shop as well, or shop for her. So I've phoned Independence at Home, the council run service, to make arrangements for her to have the package of care in place. Transport to be arranged to, I imagine, for uh, midday, for 12. So if everything can be ready by 12, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Hello, is that Community Short Term Services? Yes, I'd like to um, book transport today, okay. please, yes. for a lady there who's go. going home from Chichester Ward with discharge to assess. A, a chair ambulance will be fine. Um, the lady can stand and take a few steps. Um, but she'll probably need a chair. She lives in the ground floor flat. Okay, is there anything that you want to ask me? No, I'm still a bit nervous. Going home. Yeah. yeah. Anxiety is a, a, around leaving hospital is, is very common, especially when patients have had a fall. It does knock your confidence. It did. And that's why we're putting the support in place for you. Yeah. Part of our treatment was to build up her confidence and to have those repeated conversations. Talk her through the process of going home and what supports we would put in place for her. Hopefully you can be reassured that the same experts that you've had on this ward yes. will be there to help you at home and, yeah. and help that transition from hospital to home. Yeah. But it's never an easy journey. No, no. Yeah.
it's a lovely sunny day out there. So when we go, would you like to drive back through the city or would you like a nice ride along the beach? The beach. The beach. Okay, it's beautiful this morning. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I did down on the seafront. Yeah? Yeah, by the King Alfred. Oh, I know. On this occasion, a local transport provider took Diane home. But usually, a relative is asked to arrange this. Bye. If um, Diane had gone through a more conventional discharge process, once she would have been deemed medically fit, she'd have been waiting on the ward for possibly a physiotherapist to assess her and start looking at her mobility and transfers and those sort of things. Then the occupational therapist would do an assessment to see if there's any washing and dressing issues. And then if it was deemed that she might need to have some care, then the social worker would then assess and then you'd have to wait for the care to be set up. Now that could take a couple of weeks. Okay, just down the ramp. Yeah. Okay, ground. As part of this process, we do work closely with the Red Cross to provide a sitting service sometimes between the gap between somebody arriving home and one of us coming in the afternoon to do the assessments. Nice to see you. <laughs> However, we didn't need to use the Red Cross because her neighbour was quite happy to sit with her until we arrived and that's what she did. Hello. Hi, OK? No, just got here. Good, OK, let's go then. All right. My name's Adrian Kemp. I'm yeah. a physiotherapist. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. And this is my occupational therapy colleague. What we'd like to do now, if you're feeling all right, we'll just make sure that you're safe getting up from the sofa. Yeah. Try not to hang on to that no. because that's obviously a bit yeah. dodgy for you yeah. to hold on to, it moves. Yeah. And then we'll see you move around the flat and just see what you can and can't do, yeah. getting on off the bed, that yeah. sort of thing. No. Oh. You're there, you're the, you, you did it. How was that getting up that time? No, I didn't notice the mark. It looked easier. It's possibly because you're a bit higher there than you are on the sofa. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. The chair's easier because you've got two arms to push up from. Yeah. But I could put back tomorrow with some razors. Yeah. We can have a go and see if it's a bit easier for you. Yes, now, the carers, as I'm sure Mandy's explained, they'll be coming in three times a day yeah. to help you with things like washing, dressing, and make sure you take the right medication yeah. and also yeah. um, your meals. But for tonight, to get yourself into bed and stay the night there sleeping and then get up in the morning with or with the carer or by yourself, does that worry you at all? Do you think you may be able to manage that or have you got any concerns about that? I could make a phone call to see if we could get someone to sit with you tonight. Would you like that? Yeah. OK. Yeah. And I will probably come in tomorrow with Di with a walking stick yeah. for you and yeah. we can see how things are and have another chat tomorrow morning. Yeah. Would that be all right? Yeah. OK, good. Brilliant. Fantastic. A local agency was called to provide a night sitter, but normally a relative is asked to stay with the patient at home if necessary. Just get your breath back. Now, is that... Six days later, and Adrienne returns to see how Diane is getting on back home. The day of discharge, she seemed quite tired and a bit wobbly on her legs, which is why we put in a night call. Um, however, after that, the next day, for instance, she was miles better, seemed quite chirpy, quite happy moving around her flat by herself. So again, it will just be um, good to see how she's doing today, but it just shows that people need that time just to get over, just literally getting out of hospital. Travelling out of hospital is exhausting, and um, you get a much better picture you know, even a day after they're at home. And you know, for her, it was really good. Oh, hello. hello, how are you? Oh, just nice to see you again. Yeah. How do you feel? Fine. How is the stick, using the stick? Because I was very pleased to see you actually using that and not... Um... Yeah, I do use it. Do... I get out uh, when I go to bed. Yes. Uh, I use it. Yeah. Get back into bed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's all right. You're actually moving around the flat quite well. Yeah. So despite the pain, you're getting yeah. on, and I'm glad you've got the cushions there still for your back. Yeah. yeah. I was really pleased with that visit. She uh, looks more confident. She's moving around her flat well. She's using the stick. She's stuck to some of the advice. Got the carers going in for the time being, which will be reviewed soon. And she's come out of hospital a lot quicker than she would have done, and looking better for it, in my view. Patients 
enjoy this process, they enjoy the attention. It helps them to get what they want. They want to recover in their own homes. Their own journey in the hospital is when they're unwell, they're there. When they're out of hospital, everything else gets sorted at home because that's where it's pertinent and that's where it makes sense. Diane is still happily out of hospital and receiving regular support and care at home.